got a seven and a half hour drive ahead and it's pitch black outside. Um, Welcome to Louisiana. Welcome to Louisiana. Woohoo! Right, change your clocks. It, this is Canal Street here. We had a bit of a disaster last night. For now, we have a cemetery tour. Welcome back to the channel. Whirly and Nick, a couple from the UK. In 2017, we gave up our 95 lives and bought a lodge on the east coast of England, where we started enjoying life and seeing more of the world. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and join us on our biggest adventure yet as we drive from LA to Orlando on our USA road trip. guys welcome to the next vlog good morning very early start so today we are driving to new orleans we're packed up and ready it's about half six in the morning maybe 20 to 7 um, which is 6 43 6 43 um i'm surprised we're up to be honest we had one snooze on the alarm we've rushed in the shower we've packed up the room i've been and filled, filled the icing from the ice box we just need to get it all down for the car now and then go and pick vera up yeah we've got a seven and a half hour drive ahead and it's pitch black outside <laughs> up the lovely Vera she's in the back and we have seven hours 44 minutes 495 miles to go until the next hotel in New Orleans we've only got 399 miles of petrol <laughs> sun just coming up over there that's the um, Texas State Fair just there as well with a big wheel yeah with a big wheel right we're called off for petrol it is 339 so oh, not too way. bad so we're going to fill up, we're just having a break, stretching our legs, might go get a coffee from the food mart. We are on the Texas-Louisiana border, so as soon as we finish this garage and go down the motorway, the clocks will change for the very final time and we'll be on Florida time for the rest of the trip. You know what's going to happen now? We're going to need the loo. We're going to need to stop in another 10 miles. Yeah, but I just, just to run through him. <laughs> I need to wake up and they don't have decaf. Yeah, they don't have decaf. So it is absolutely freezing here. It's like 17 degrees, which is not freezing, but because we're used to warm weather now, 17 is cold. Now we need to eat some breakfast. Right, we're very close to that lorry. And then we are very close to the state border of Louisiana, is it? Yep. So, um, should be a sign on the right hand side, I didn't like. Yeah. I think they... this is the Texas one here. Oh yeah. Let's have well, there should be one on our side. No. no, that's just the Wascom one. So, what, how many states will this be when we get here? Oh god, I have no idea. We'll have to calculate it. Uh, four, because we have five, to go into maybe. Alabama briefly when we can go to Florida for about half an hour and then come back out again. Mississippi. Oh yeah. Well, I, 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 welcome, this says welcome to Louisiana. Um, welcome to Louisiana. Welcome to Louisiana. Woohoo! Right, change your clocks. heading through a town called, I think it's pronounced Shenneville, probably pronounce it completely wrong. Not much here, but we have two hours, 52 minutes left to go. We might stop actually, because Vera needs a tinkle and I need to fill some more petrol up in the car and I want my sandwich. Okay. How much petrol are you? 3.19 and 2 hours Still 43 negative. minutes to go. Still half of what it was in California. Crispito. Crispito. Chicken and cheese. Very nice. Nick's just getting a um, decaf coffee. Um, yeah. yeah. With all this coffee in this um, too much choice. garage. Food in Rice, sausage fries. Ooh. In this um, garage. Look at all this. Fried stuff that they've got. Boudin is like sausage, I think. Oh, yes, it is. I've had that at Epcot. So you can make your own nachos, 
put the tortilla chips in the um, tray, squeeze your own nacho cheese sauce, and then load it with jalapenos. jalapenos. <laughs> Just getting back in the car, Vera spotted this dragonfly that's stuck in the um, mesh. Looks like it's dead. Got so many bugs on the car. Right, right. let me try this chi chiquito, is it? Crispito. 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 Chicken and cheese. Mm. How, Quite much, nice. how much was that? Mm, with that in the coffee, it was three ninety five. Like but it's like a, it's like a salty cheese. It's almost like a chicken and juice pasta from Greg's without the pastry, but it's more batter. But it's really nice. Right, so we're uh, we're off the highway now. We're on um, a smaller road. We're in the heart of Louisiana. Farming country. All farming country. Lots of trains and train tracks. The town we've just been in was very. Um, farm orientated yeah. there were like instead of garages on the right side of the road there was tractor garages where people could hire tractors and combine harvesters and things like that so one of the places that we've got on our list to see when we're in New Orleans is actually a movie location now it's actually about 40 minutes out of the city but it's on the road that we're going in on to get into the city so we've set the sign up to that so in two hours 12 minutes we'll be there yeah we weren't planning on doing that today but we figured since we're going past it we might as well call it yeah so we're not going to tell you guys what the movie is you'll just have to guess and then at some point during the vlog, we will tell you, obviously. Yeah. And um, we said earlier as well that when we crossed the state line, it changed time zones. I was wrong, it wasn't. We actually change on the other side of Louisiana when we leave it. So we're still in, uh, we're still one hour ahead of Florida at the minute. So there's loads of like, there's a little house and then loads of farmland. So I'm guessing that's obviously like the farmers. That little house, all these farmyards at the side. We just keep going through a little town, then a break, then another Nothing. town, then a break. And each town's kind of got the same thing. It's got a town hall, gas Nick, station. Nick thought it was subway. Uh, where uh, Signs was filmed. Well, it looks like it. I mean, we've seen a lot of cornfield. It looks like it, but it's not. Signs was filmed in Pennsylvania, or at least set in Pennsylvania. That looks like something from the movie Twister. It looks exactly like Twister. and it's over the Mississippi hey, River. Mississippi, hey, bitty, bitty, whatever that song is. Uh, so here we are. Oh, can we actually see it? <laughs> we'll, just, oh, uh, we'll see it. Over. Yeah, you'll see it over there. Oh, I can see it, I can see it. I can oh, see yeah. it. Look at that big cargo ship in the centre of it. Yeah. Mississippi River on the side. Yeah. Look. Yeah, it's bigger than Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, this. Yeah, this is wild. Well, big bridge. They have huge ships coming through here. I wonder if it's a lever bridge that lifts up so they can get under, or whether it's high enough. I think that's why it's so high. Right. Look how high this bridge is that we're coming up to, to let the uh, ships through. Um, underneath on the Mississippi River. We're back over it now. Yeah, so we've been over it once, so we're now going back over it the other way. Here we go. I've never seen that like it. It's like we're almost going up vertical. Well, we are. Like, there must be like a 40 degree gradient in this to go up. You don't get bridges anything like this at home, do you? No, not going up like this. They usually all just like open up the front for uh, ships and stuff. Louisiana 18 East for 15 Louisiana miles. Louisiana 18. Oh, where it's Just said, over this hole is the Mississippi River, and we are 18 minutes away from our destination. Right, so you'll see all the sugar cane. Now, the first stop where we're going um, was a producer producer of sugar cane, and um, yeah. well, what, what was the producer? The, the plantation where we're going. The owner. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Famous yeah. for, like the farming. Yes. Because we're literally on the Mississippi. Which is just there, yeah. over that bank. Um, now, can you remember any of the facts that you read? No, but I'll get them up on my phone <laughs> in a bit. 
Right, we've got to our destination, which is the Oak Alley Plantation. Now, you do actually have to pay to get into the grounds, and um, you get uh, like a tour of the house in with it. I think it was $30. Or oh, 27 just to look around the grounds person. with no house. Uh, now, we're not going to do that because this is just like a little stop off on the way. We were going to maybe do this um, in the next couple of days, but as we were passing, we thought we'd just come here check it out yeah um, you can't film or photo photography inside but the movie that i wanted to see this for which is one of my favorite films um, from my one of my favorite um, book series um i don't think it was filmed inside it was just outside so i wanted to come and look at the outside of it remember Nick's, the bit we're going to show is actually the outside yes yeah, so and Nick's going to give you some um, information so. about oak alley plantation so basically, it's on the um, on the banks of the Mississippi, um, surrounded by farmland where there's loads of sugarcane. I can actually see it from here growing. Um, the house was basically built by mud bricks, directly from the Mississippi, 16-inch blocks. By slaves. By slaves. It's surrounded by lots of oak trees. 300 years old trees. 300 year old oak trees. And they're, they're beautiful gardens and surrounding. Yeah. And you wouldn't believe that the Mississippi River is literally behind this structure over here. And the house is just there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive around the road directly in front of the scene that you will see from this particular movie. Yeah, it has been in quite a lot of movies, some There's that we've one not particular heard of. One, though. I mean, I've not heard of any of them apart no, from this apart particular from the, one. The, this particular one, and like I say, it's from one of my all-time favorite book series, which I've read over and over again. I've I read watched them it all. a few months back, actually. Um, yeah, one of apart my favorite anyway. authors. Uh, unfortunately, she, um, she has passed away now. Um, she is from New Orleans. She's from New Orleans. So we're giving clues away here. Yeah, I'm giving clues away. We're hopefully going to go see her house in the next couple of days, maybe her grave. But we'll go and have a look at the house from the front. So while these guys have restroom stops, this is one of the oak trees, one of the 300-year-old oak trees. This one's so big, its branches are actually weighing itself down onto the floor. And it looks like um, years-old Spanish moss has actually covered the branches and then died off. Another one of the oak trees there. That one's not weighing itself down, although the branches on the left-hand side are probably touching the ground, so uh, I don't know. And then you can see another one in the far distance. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the fence there, just pull the car over and actually get out and just film what, what you will have seen on this particular movie. Right, there is the house. It's not the greatest view. Um, we do read some um, TripAdvisor questions that said you could get in and look at the house without having to pay to get in. But it's tough. But you can't. It's $27 per person just to look at the house. It's or, free to look from the road. Yeah, $30 per person to go inside the house, which I wasn't bothered about anyway. Um, so the film that I know this from is Interview with the Vampire. It's where Louis and Lestat lived and they had slaves um, and then they start to realize that there were something wrong with them, like i.e. they were vampires. So the house was burnt down in the film. So when you see, if you've watched that film and you can remember the house burning, um, that is it. Uh, Nick's got a list of other films which were filmed here, which we've not really heard of, but you guys may have heard of them. But uh, yeah, we know it from Interview with a Vampire. Right, so the list of films is, and all these I've not heard of, and, uh, apart from the last one, Interview with a Vampire. Uh, so, Midnight Bayou, Hush Hush, Sweet Car Lot, uh, Night Rider, not the TV series, Days of Our Lives, not the TV series, uh, Long Hot Summer, Primary Colours, and of course, Interview with a Vampire. Yeah. So there we go. Plantation, uh, Oak Alley Plantation. Yeah. yeah. So that's the main view from the front. So, as far as I remember, that is the view where Louis is coming out of his house and the, the whole place is burning. And those are uh, the 300 year old oak trees, which have a lifespan of 600 years. So they've got another 300 years to go. Right, I'll just zoom in on the house. And then uh, now we're gonna get off to our next hotel. Right, we are now one hour, three minutes away to our hotel in New Orleans. And we are in the center of the French Quarter. Um, close to Bourbon Street, Bourbon Street, and um, Vera is going to um, scout out the best place to get a hurricane drink when we get there. Pat O'Brien's, apparently. Pat O'Brien's. Yeah. Isn't that where it, inve where it was invented? Yes, indeed. The famous hurricane drink. So, um, parking at our hotel is $51 a night, which we absolutely refuse to uh, park there and pay that kind of money. So we've used an app called Spot Hero, which is an American parking app, and we've managed to find parking for $41 for three nights. So that's gonna be a bit of a um, adventure 
finding this parking lot and then humping the cases across town or we may just drop Lee off at the hotel and I'll go and park. Yeah. We're 11 minutes away from Vera's hotel, which is just three minutes away from our hotel. So there's the uh, skyline of um, New Orleans. Not what I expected. I no, expected I didn't... it to be like St. Augustine. Yes. That's what I'm, in my mind, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I must admit, I didn't realise it had like big skyscrapers and stuff like that. Well, that's the business district. I've just seen a sign, we've just yeah. passed it. like a nice hotel. That's where we're staying. <laughs> we wish. We're not staying there, that's it. You never know. Well, that might be the back of our hotel. Yeah. Right, we've dropped Vera off and we're just going to the uh, car park. Uh, we're just on Canal Street, which is one of the widest streets in America. And um, there's a lot going off on this street. It's not, again, it's not what I imagined. <laughs> bit of jazz in the um, hotel lobby. Let's get up to our room, we've got a corner room. Right, we've made it into our hotel, the JW Marriott, New Orleans, in the French Quarter. Um, parking here was $51 a night, so we went onto the app Spot Hero, and we got it for three nights for $41. We might um, get the car back at the end. <laughs> it is a seven minute walk from that car park to this hotel, um, but we saved ourselves over $100. So I'm gonna show you around this hotel room by starting with the amazing view that is just in front of me. There, that is the view. So we're on the 15th floor. Uh, as you may have seen from previous scenes, there's lots of sort of trams, that we'll be able to uh, hop on and hop off as we are exploring. This is the, this is Canal Street here, which is supposedly one of the largest streets in America. Widest. Widest, yeah. And there's the Mississippi River, just there. Somebody stood on that, top of that building. Just there. Dressed in black. A quick room tour. We have a corner room. So we have a king size bed, is it? Looks like it, or a queen. Mm, it's quite big. Queen. Queen's a small. King maybe. Um, so we've got all this space. Feels very um, spacious. Desk. Under here we have coffee machine. Safe. And a fridge. TV. And our wardrobe. A uh, little place sort of to put his luggage there. And then this very nice bathroom, which includes two luxurious robes, sink, and then in here, oops, where's the light? Here we go, let's go to the light. And then the very nice shower room with a little bit of artwork of the Mississippi River. day um, quickly obviously from the last scene we had a bit of a disaster last night so last night we Vera came to our hotel um, about half past seven mm -hmm. Berlin that's it was light wasn't it yeah we walked literally straight across the road um, went down Bourbon Street uh, went into a bar to get a drink before food and um, turned around and Vera was laid on the floor she tripped over a step and the next three hours, she was basically screaming. And when I say screaming, I mean screaming in pain. Um, she was reluctant for us to call an ambulance. Eventually, once we got her back to the hotel and she tried to rest it, the pain got worse. And eventually we called 911. An ambulance turned up, Vera was really reluctant. And then in the end, she actually said to us, phone the hospital. So fire brigade turned up, ambulance turned up. This was about 10 last night. Mm -hmm. Um, You've probably seen um, Vera in our vlogs before. She she has a bit of a limp. She yep. has a, a bad hip, um, which and was, she fell on it. She was going to get sorted at some point. Um, um, well, but she she, she tumbled, broke it and she's got a broken hip. So she's currently in the hospital, about ten minutes away from here. We were there until 
2 a.m., 1 a.m. last night with her. Um, just, you know, they were absolutely amazing with her. In and out, brought portable x-ray machine in, diagnosed her within 30 seconds, yeah. broken hip, gave her some really strong painkillers. Then she became more cognitive and she could actually speak. The, the time from when she fell up until when she was in hospital, she can't remember any of it. Just because of the pain. Because of the pain. Mm -hmm. um, so we were a bit, we were a bit shook up, but we were like, "What the hell do we do?" Because obviously, in the UK, you just phone an ambulance, but obviously, medical and, and medical insurance and all that kind of stuff works differently in the US. And it's a lot different when um, the emergency services arrive as well. First of all, the fire, fire department came with a massive fire engine. About three firemen came, and then about five minutes later, if that about paramedics. five paramedics came, so Vera's room was filled with about ten men all sort of like helping her, getting her onto a stretcher and then getting her to the, the hospital, which the hospital was absolutely amazing. We bet, we actually went in an Uber, they wouldn't let us ride in the ambulance, we went in an Uber, we bet the ambulance there. Um, we spent about 20 minutes waiting. Yeah. And then they said you can come through and they'd given us some fent fentanyl, Something like that. So which basically was like a it. morphine substitute type thing, so the, the pain literally went. So, Vera's family is on her way, and on their way. Um, we're going to go and see her now, uh, drop her stuff off. We went back yep. to her hotel because she was originally due to check out today and fly back to Orlando. So we've got to clear her room out for her. All her stuff here. We're going to go and drop those off, see her. Um, she's having surgery today. Yeah. Um, so um, we're going to drop her phone charger off because the phone's on, on its last legs. Yeah. So I've just got a text message from her saying that she's having surgery very soon. Very soon. So, um, so we need to head up there. So. Um, we're just going to go just going to cobble the best do. we can from the vlog. See so. what we can do and then while she's in surgery, because it's going to take hours, we're going to just go and do some stuff around New Orleans. So we might go yep. to Café du Mont. And tonight, as long as everything goes to plan, we have a cemetery tour, which will be in this vlog later. Yep. Unless anything changes and we need to be yep. there from Vera. But her family's literally yep. going to take over from yep. us. So, so uh, we're going to go see her now. And so um, not the best start to New Orleans. No, but um, um, at least she's getting her hip sorted, which she has needed to Sorting and unfortunately, just unfortunately, it's happened while she's uh, yeah. on a trip. And it, ironically, it was only actually today that we were talking about when she's going to get it sorted. Uh, sorry, it was only yesterday. yesterday that we were actually talking about when she's going to get it sorted. Yes, because it has been niggling her this week. So, um, right, we're going to go to the hospital now, but um, we'll show you what we can um, as we get there. We're going to walk there um, through sorry, Canal Street, than a mile. Et and um, then we'll uh, see what we can do with the day. So, obviously New Orleans is the birthplace of jazz. This is the only place we've made it though. <laughs> As you come out of the uh, hotel, they've got jazz playing. So we're, we're now on our way to the hospital. Um, I think we've got to cross Canal Street. Yeah, um, no, it's on this side. Oh, is it on this side? I'll yeah. just vlog if there's anything interesting along the way. So we've got uh, Vera's um, hand luggage and bless her, her Disney rucksack to take to the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> to uh, go on Canal Street. A bit lively, <laughs> lively. Lots of people around. Love this Walgreens. It's just, uh, it looks very retro. Very uh, Vegas. Yeah. So the current lottery uh, total here for this week is $355 million. Maybe we'll get a ticket. Right, here we are at this very nice hospital. We've just got to find his way in. She's still in the ER, so... Oh, I'm going to just drop a point this way then. We've uh, been into the hospital. Vera is in surgery now, and they said she's going to be in there for about four to five hours. So they're going to let us know any updates as soon as they have any. Um, so they're looking after her well, thankfully. Um, so we're going to head into town now and go to a Café du Mont to try one of the famous New Orleans beignets. Are we sharing? We'll see how big they are when we get uh, there. No. We're taking a, a quick detour on our way to Café du Mont, onto Bourbon Street, just to have a look around here. Right, so this is the famous Bourbon Street where you can walk around with drinks in your hand on the street and things like that. Now we're obviously in it in the daytime, apparently it is a little bit sketchy in the evening, so you've got to be careful and you've got to keep your things, your valuables uh, on you at all times and stuff like that. But uh, it should be fine during the day. It is very busy though, even during the day. Right, we've stopped 
at Cafe Beignet. Uh, not gonna get any beignets here because we wanna go to Cafe du Mont for that. So I've just got a, a tea and we've ordered some jambalai, which we are just waiting to be delivered. And we're just listening to a little bit of jazz in the background. When we got back from the hospital last night, we actually ordered an Uber Eats and we got a po' boy. At 2 a.m. A po' boy, that was very nice. Basically, a boy. chicken baguette. And we also got a little pot of jambalai, but we didn't really taste it properly, so I'm hoping no. this is going to be a big dish. Yeah. The Uber Eats guy brought it to us on a bicycle, and it was about 2, 2 a.m., 2 30 a.m., and then we got to bed finally about 3 a.m. So uh, I'm doing well out on a little sleep today. We've got a tour later, so check yourself up, get a coffee. That was fast. Right. So jambalaya, what is it? So it's rice? It's Cajun rice yeah. with um, onion, garlic, um, spices. I think this one's got sausage in it, sausage, maybe? Yeah, they've got sausage in it as well. With a, yeah, a big chunk of bread. Mm. It smells divine. It's like... It's like rice with smoked paprika and onion. I can make that. <laughs> Come on, so you can. So that jambalaya was absolutely delicious and I'll be definitely trying that when we get back to the lunch. Very nice, I really enjoyed that and the beignets in there looked amazing. Three for $4.75 and each one of them was about that big. So we're not sharing. But we are going to get one at Café du Monde, hopefully if the um, lines aren't too busy. Right, we're going to make our way back, carry on down. We've got um, another stop. Yes. What's Marie, it Bourbon Street? Marie Laval. Bourbon Street. Just keep saying Bourbon. <laughs> So the architecture is very French, just like we uh, what we saw when we went to um, Disney's um, Port Orleans French Quarter. Kind of exactly the same kind of buildings and terraces. And even though it's like one in the afternoon, the uh, that's not filling me with encouragement. Okay, let's cross over. So uh, even though it's like one in the afternoon, it's still pretty lively down here. Literally every doorway you pass has a different music singer on or... There we go. So if you come to New Orleans for that party atmosphere, you're not going to be disappointed. My only reference to Bourbon Street, um, New Orleans, is from an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, where um, Riker went into the holodeck and recreated a jazz bar in here from the 1800s. It's certainly not anything like that. So imagine staying there, you'd never sleep at all. Unless you were on the other side, it's basically the uh, Four Points by Sheraton. Certainly not a hotel that I would willingly choose. Is it you? I like the theme into it, but yeah. you'd never sleep. Right, so we've got to Marie Laveau's House of Voodoo. Now she was a very famous voodoo person. She was like the voodoo queen of New Orleans back in the day. She was also a midwife and um, a cultist and she did readings and um, you can get spell kits and all sorts of stuff in here. So uh, let's see if I can get some of Vera's hip. Right, so we had a look around Madame Laveau. Unfortunately, they don't allow you to take any photos or videos and the uh, reason they give you it is that if you take a photo or video then you take some bad spirits away with you wherever you go so um, <laughs> we only had a look around it smelled very nice in there though it looks like voodoo things incense just, sticks things just, like that just reminded me of claire's accessories on on uh, like gothic style right so here's the famous pat o'brien's where the famous drink the hurricane was uh, invented. We once tried one at House of Blues in Disney Springs. Was it Disney Springs? Uh, yes. Yes. So um, I'm going to have one while we're here. Okay. Right, here we go. The famous so it Pat looks, O'Brien cherry cane. So I'm assuming it's, it's cherry flavoured. Strong. It's nice though, Marty. You're not feeling strong. Is it nice though? Yeah. Well, apparently it's got two two different types of rum, grenadine, simple syrups, and also some other bits in bath. But my God, that is really strong. And it's not. It was pre-mixed. They had them already. So it's not like the uh, the for the spirits in the bottle. It actually tastes like it tastes throughout the entire drink. I like that. Very cherry. I feel like a fire-breathing dragon. I can literally taste the alcohol in the back of my breath. We're going to be plastered in this heat. Eh? Morning, I'm in this one. And I gave us some water to go to uh, wash it down yeah. with as well. So today, well, we're trying like um, classic um, food and drink of New Orleans. We're going to share. Just so we don't get too uh, full or too drunk. Well, we're going back to us as uh, promised to ourselves that we we're going to share for the whole trip, which yeah. we did in the first day, first few days. Now we need to um, we need to continue. I like that. Really like it. 
So price wise, these are actually really cheap. These were eleven dollars fifty plus the tip, and that's basically for a pint of a cocktail that is actually about four times stronger than a cocktail anywhere else. Hence why it's famous. Right, so as well as uh, Powell Brands, the outside area, they've got a bar, to make, bar next to me on the right, which is just more like a saloon. And then straight opposite, they've got a piano bar. So we're going to pop in there, see if we can um, put um, some tunes on the piano. They've got two copper pianos, and they play tunes um, based on what you put down on your on beer mats and tip the, um, the Pianist. pianists. So we're going to go and try that. Oh. out of the hustle and bustle of Bourbon Street now and looking for Café du Monde which I don't think is too far now is it? It's on the waterfront just down here there's multiple Café du Monde the one that we're going to is the French market one um, there is also this is the most popular one there is others called Café Beignet well there's loads hundreds in fact we've just been but, into Café Beignet Café, Café du Monde uh, Café du Monde is one of the the big ones where it kind of all started type thing there's loads of different stalls here, tattoos, tarot reading, henna, some readings there, lots of uh, tarot readings, and then to uh, Bourbon Street. Yeah, this is more relaxed, more um, sort of maybe cultural and nice gardens over there. Well, let's move through them because it's on the other side on the waterfront. So this is Jackson Square. Just by the waterfront, you can see the ships down there. And uh, that fountain was uh, put up. Oh, say what? That fountain was put up to commemorate Charles de Gaulle visiting What's the here. The airport? The French president. Ah. So this area is a lot more like I was expecting in New Orleans. This is exactly what I was expecting. Yeah, like lots of um, trumpets and trombones and all the tarot Culture. reading and the voodoo stuff and just, I like it. I'm going to be unpopular now and I'm oh. going to say that Bourbon Street is a bit trashy. Well, it's, yeah, but it's, it's, got a, it's, it's got a vibe all onto its own and you can it, walk yeah, around with drinks not and stuff one, and um, it is a bit rowdy and a it's, bit, it's a bit, there's a few sketchy characters around always trying to get you to buy things and you just got to be careful. Right, there is Café du Monde, the original coffee stand. The queues don't look too bad that I can see, although there may be uh, a queue down the other side. We'll just have to see how long it is. If you've queued for flight of passage, this is nothing. Right, here is the queue. So these best be uh, good beignets. I'm just looking up the history of beignets, uh, or beignet, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it actually originated in Louisiana uh, by the French Arcadians uh, in the 18th century. We always thought they were from France, but they're not. They're from the French Arcadians. Okay, so if you don't want to queue in the big massive long queues for takeaway, you can actually get table service. So we just ordered off the menu, we're getting a portion of three beignets, or beignet, whatever, um, and two decaf cafe au lait. on it. What's your verdict? Very good. Oh, is that it? Very good. Tastes like a seaside donut. Ooh, I want to try now. Exactly like a seaside donut back in the UK. Exactly the same. Right, I've got to vlog quickly before.
before he starts playing something else. I'm going to be controversial. They are very nice, but I prefer the ones in downtown Disney, California. Yeah, so do I. They just taste like seaside donuts. They are nice, though. They are, well, nice. they are better than the ones we had in Paris and the ones we had in uh, Port Orleans in Disney World. Yes. Far better than them. The ones in Disney in Port Orleans were dry. Rubbish. But these are like, the fatty, but, nice. they, but they do taste like seaside donuts yeah. in the UK. Right, so my verdict on those were they were very nice at only $3.40 for three, but if there is a massive queue, then I wouldn't be put off going somewhere else um, because they were just beignets and they were very nice, but um, not like the greatest ones I've ever tasted. The coffee was nice too, we got a decaf, cafe over and milky. Yeah. Um, if they were the originals, I prefer the, the ones that we've already had. Yeah, the ones at Disney Springs. Yeah, oh, sorry, Disney. downtown Disney in California. They were beautiful. They were amazing. They yeah. were very big and very dense, but they were nice. Yeah. And if there's no queue, just go to the table. If you, there was the long queue, but then we saw people just walk into a table and you get table service. So that's a lot easier way to do it. Yeah. Right. So we've just made our way over to the Mississippi, and uh, there's a nice big clipper ship. Apparently, apparently, you can book evening meals on that. Yeah. So and our hotel is. Over there. Over there, is it? Because you can just see the Mississippi from our hotel window. So this is just a nice spot away from the hustle and the bustle, just to relax. And then over there is the French Market District where we were with the Jackson Square. Right, we're going to head over to the Clipper ship. We're going to have a look at the prices. Uh, we do have tomorrow night free. Everything, assuming everything goes okay with Vera, we may end up booking that for an evening uh, uh, river cruise. But we're going to go and check the prices out. A lot of padlocks here. There's millions. Yeah. Anybody know what this is all about? Drop us a comment below, because we've no idea. Well, we've seen Apart a lot of the these pants. kind of things in the UK, haven't we? Who would it? Apart from the pants. pants. Not bothered about what they're for. Right, there's no prices on here, but this is the uh, Steamboat Company. They do uh, dinner jazz cruises at 7 p.m., Harbour Day cruises, and then here's some tours as well um, that you can go out on. Presumably these are during the day when the yeah. cruises, evening cruises are not right. And then some walking tours that you can get as well. So if you want to check out the prices on those, visit neworleanssteamboatcompany.com. So this is the French Market District. Loads and loads of stalls of all sorts of stuff, clothes, trinkets, food, roasted corn. That sounds good, even though I'm not hungry after those beignets. It's actually just a little bit down from the, uh, the dock area yeah. that we just were on. Let's have a little uh, mooch around. Jewelry, bags, animal bags. If you want a frog bag, no thanks. Or a duck bag. Tempting. Hats. Nice. What? Stolen from somebody's whorehouse, Bourbon Street whorehouse. How can we get that? <laughs> Lots of Mardi Gras beads here. Oh, I have seen people this morning, we're carrying them, actually Ooh. carrying them around. Two dollars for a bundle, that's not bad. That's wow. not bad at all. I quite like these as well, if I had somewhere to put them. I don't know where I'd put them, though, but I like them. Want some for the hall in the lodge? Yeah, probably not that, though. Little voodoo dolls. Yeah. Who would, it, who would it be though? Who would I name it after? You've got to name it after somebody and then stick pins in them. Well, that should be easy. Right, we've decided to get Mrs. Bazza, Mrs. Theme Park Bazza, a hat, a New Orleans hat. I think she'll like that, hopefully. I think, I think, I'm sure I've seen her in hats. I think so. We we're going to get a pink, but Lee said she's not a pink person. Well, I don't really know, to be honest. So, she's got... having a faded denim one. Yeah, do you think that's alright? The... Yeah. I do like is the pink adjustable? one. Yeah, it is. Which do you think she'd wear? I think she'd wear that one. I'm sure I've seen her in non pinky ones. Okay. Like, right, let's get this. Can't pass a Christmas shop without good in it. Oh, look at these. What? <laughs> like um, merman um, ornaments. Hmm. Paris of the Caribbean mermaid. No. $249. For a village. The village. It's got a little spinny thing and lights. Maybe we should get um, <laughs> Vera Christmas ornament of an ambulance. Perfect. Oh, this or even one. A, a, a fire truck, because that arrived last night as well. What about this one where she's learning to walk again? <laughs> Bless her. We'll update you as soon as we get some news about Vera. Mardi Gras tree. I like this. That looks a bit freaky. Yeah, that's a little bit freaky. I won't want that in my house at Christmas. But I quite like these Mardi Gras baubles and ornaments. That's freaky me out like Chucky. We're just trying to find a balcony to sit on and have a drink. I like the look of this one, although I don't think it looks like a cafe. It's all done up for uh, Halloween, unless it's always like that. Lots of greenery. Is it? A, what Might is be it? Hotel. Might be a hotel, yeah. 
Right, we're just pondering back looking for somewhere to sit. We've actually come down a street that's parallel to Bourbon Street and this one's called Royal Street, I think, and it's full of art galleries and quirky shops with like gifts. There's a lot of expensive items in here and you can see a lot of people with paintings like seven to eight foot tall that's just stunning shops buying them. Just coming to our hotel, and this is like the front entrance that goes on Canal Street. I'm quite surprised because like, I only saw the check-in desk yesterday. I didn't even see all this part of our I know. hotel. I said to you, didn't I? It seems small. Like, no, Bridal shop, restaurants, ATM. It's got a Vegas hotel feel, hasn't it? Can you eat here tonight? Yeah, right. Do you fancy a drink, Lee? Here. Right now. Right now, up there. On one of those sofas. Right then. Grab the menu, let's go and sit up. I'll find a sofa. Do me. Oh, lovely aircon and somewhere to rest. So we didn't find a, um, a bar an outside balcony um, to sit at. You had to buy full meals to um, sit at most of the balconies. So we just came back to our hotel. It's quite nice in here actually. Um, so we're just saying we're kind of not feeling it today. Obviously, our friends in hospital. We keep checking up on news. Apparently, she's going to be out very soon. But then she's got a three-hour recovery. Um, not out of hospital, out of surgery. Um, so we're kind of just not feeling it today because we're, we're, we're worried about Vera and we're talking to her family and stuff. So um, hopefully we'll get to see her tonight, but um, visiting just finish at 8pm. So hopefully we will get to see her. I was of a place that brings snacks with your drinks. All of a good snack, although not quite sure what they are, but um, I'll try them anyway. I'll try them. Right, it's a couple of hours later. We're still waiting on news for Vera coming out of theatre. Uh, but for now we have a cemetery tour. So you may or may not know that New Orleans is quite famous for its cemeteries. Quickly, over here. Um, over here? Yeah. Oh, we're going on a cemetery. I'll let you know a little bit more about it when we get out of our Uber. Right, as I was saying, you may or may not know that uh, New Orleans is famous for its um, cemeteries. Because New Orleans is um, a below the water sea table. water, they can't really bury their dead underwater because it would be all soggy and what have you. And rot so, really quickly. Yeah, New Orleans is very famous for their above ground cemeteries. Crypts. Uh, crypts and stuff like that. And doing cemetery tours is quite a popular thing here to do. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to check, check it out. It's and a bit cheesy, but we'll just see. Well, it's, it's, we waited until evening, obviously, so it'll be a little bit spooky. I'm all right, it's atmospheric. Yeah. And this is the tour that we are doing, um, Ghost Riders Tour, and the tour meets here. We booked this on Viator and it was £69 for both of us. Hoping this is an hour tour bus. Please sit together with your party, do not space out. <laughs> Hi, my name is Raphael. I'm your tour guide this evening. Welcome to NOLA Ghost Riders 8 o'clock cemetery tour. Our driver's name is MJ. Hi, MJ. Hey, we'll MJ. We'll be your driver and your guide tonight, all right? Now, listen up, guys. We're going to talk about a few things here. Welcome to the tour. Okay, Cafe Dumont opened in 1862. It was the first coffee shop in the United States. We were serving good coffee long before Starbucks started serving that paint, okay? <laughs> Cafe Dumont in French means Cafe of the World. We've arrived at the first cemetery. Ooh. Right, here we go into our first one, Charity Hospital Cemetery. It sounds like sort of a movie, doesn't it? 1848 and 1850, there's a huge burial mound in the back of the cemetery. Don't worry, we're going back there. <laughs> None of the other tour groups take you back there, but I'm a little, you know, special. In this, this cemetery, the Charity Hospital Cemetery, after Katrina, Charity Hospital did not reopen. Okay, for many years, Charity Hospital was the second longest running continuous hospital in the United States after Bellevue in New York. It opened in 1795, it closed in 2005. 
For many years, Charity Hospital was the only hospital the city of New Orleans had up until the 1960s. Which means there's no name, we don't know who they are. Each one of those squares is a set of remains, okay? It goes all the way around the cemetery. This cemetery is laid out like a hurricane. Right now, we'd be in with, obviously, the eye of the hurricane. These are the outer bands. Anybody here who's been through a hurricane knows the eye is usually the calm part of the hurricane. One is called a residual haunting. A residual haunting is not done by a ghost or poltergeist. It's done by a spirit. Spirits, quite frankly, they don't know that they're dead. Okay, they pretty much go about their business and do the same thing they did when they were alive. All right, guys, this cemetery right here, Cypress Grove, goes back for over a mile. Okay, this cemetery's huge. All right, the burial mound we got back here goes back for a little over a mile. All right, we're surrounded by what we call the Academy of Cemeteries. All of these cemeteries around here for Katrina were underwater. There was major damage in this cemetery here. Now, when I take this EMF reader, roll my sleeve up and stick it through this gate, look what happens now. Now I'm getting activity. You see how it's turning orange and red? Y'all see it? You guys see? When I pull it back here, it's green again. When I put it through the gate, and I'm not pushing a button, I'm just reaching through. That's all I'm doing. The closer I get to the mound, the more activity I will get. Okay, a lot of these people will put here, guys, they don't want to be forgotten. What these are? Divining rods. Divining rods, <laughs> dousing rods. Went, yeah, goodness, this one had a rough life. All right, you guys see these? Now, back in the day, these were used to find water. These also could be used to communicate with the spirit world. Okay, they made a copper. Okay, you hold them just like I'm holding. Now, I'm not moving. I am not moving. There ain't no wind out here moving, okay? And the way you do these is you ask questions. You have to ask your question out loud. Ghosts and spirits are not, uh, they're not psychic, okay? If the rods are crossed in this manner, the answer is going to be yes. If the rods are open like this, the answer would be no. Okay, does anybody have a question they'd like to ask? Not everybody at once. All right, I'll ask some questions here. You guys are a little shy. All right. Are we alone? That's a no. Nick has downloaded his own magnetic field. EMF reader. EMF reader on the phone. If this, if this goes up now, <laughs> I'm going to brick it. Oh, oh my, my god. god. It has gone up as well, yeah. Has it? Oh no. No, but it's the railing. It's the railing. Oh, that's his trick. Wait a minute. That's his trick. Wait a minute. It's wait a minute. Railing. Wow. Why is it doing that? It's between the, the iron and the gate. Come on. Come on. It's the railing. It's just a railing trick. Yeah, but there must be something on it that's electrifying it. Come on for this uh, history. Are we walking thing? out backwards, yeah? Yeah. Out the gate, it's not in the fire. You guide me. I'm starting early. Are you going to do it? Yeah, I'm going to walk out my <laughs> Everybody's doing it, just in case. <laughs> right. Turn around. Here we go. Stay I'm going. You're staying. I'm going. You're staying. You're going. You're staying. You're staying. I'm going. You're staying. I'm going, you're staying, I'm going, you're staying. Right, we're having a uh, break, a coffee break and beignet break for anybody that wants them at a place called The Morning Call. I want some gumbo. Preparing the beignets at the back and just taking some out of the uh, fryer there. Gumbo, which is like a stew with rice in the middle. It smells nice, I must say. Right, and let uh, me try it. with some crackers. Mm. It's like um, either crawfish or oxtail soup, minestrone soup. Yeah, it's very with rice. familiar. You want to try it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's, oh, there's, all, right. there's all the yeah. meat in there. Yeah. Let me just mix it all up. I didn't try the meat. This might be alligator, you never know. Yeah, apparently alligator is quite um, common in New Orleans. Apparently it's very delicious. Definitely like a tin of Heinz. A tin of Heinz? Like soup. I'll have some black, like I'll have a few crackers with Like it. an oxtail soup, yeah. A lot of the tombs in these above ground cemeteries are inactive. A lot of families are not using them anymore.
locks on to get in. Locks? Oh, to where get into the tomb. Where yeah. the family owns them. You unlock it and go in and your dead relatives are inside. So this is the Masonic um, cemetery. So each each person owns a tomb per family and then all their relatives are in. Look at this one here. It's, it's, it's like a little house. It's like Spike's house from Buffy. Welcome to the Masonic Cemetery in New Orleans, Louisiana. This cemetery, my friends, opened in the year 1865, which a little point of reference, that's around the same year the Civil War ended. Now, as I told you before, the cemeteries were always on the edge of the city. As the city grew, the cemeteries were further away from downtown. Now, you gotta understand something. When the city of New Orleans was founded, we had a lot of problems here. You had disease, you had hurricanes, you had very poor sanitation. Well, not much has changed. A lot of people were dying. The very first thing we used as a cemetery in the city of New Orleans was the Mississippi River. Now, this above ground burial started around 1762 when the French lost the Seven Years' War in Europe. They signed a treaty. Everything west of the Mississippi in the New World, including the city of New Orleans, went to Spain. When the Spanish got here, they said, we need to put these bodies in above ground tombs called vaults. Now, at your funeral, when you die, you'll be in a coffin. See, most people in Orleans Parish don't buy coffins. They rent them. They will rent a coffin. The family that does buy a coffin, guess what? The entire family is going to use the same coffin. Yeah. Coffins are expensive. At your funeral, you're going to be laid out in a coffin. Maybe you'll have your Sunday's best clothes on. Maybe you'll have some jewelry, some family heirlooms in the casket with you. After the service is over, after all your family and friends pay their respects, they're going to remove your body from the casket. They're going to take the jewelry. They're gonna take the family heirlooms, they're gonna strip your body completely naked. We're gonna wrap you in a cloth, a shroud. We're gonna come over to the cemetery here. The guy that works on these tombs and builds these tombs is called a sexton. The sexton's gonna come over here. He's gonna remove this stone right here. Behind this is a layer of bricks. Right here about this point is a shelf. He's gonna put your body on that shelf. He's gonna put the brickwork back. He's gonna put this right back. He's gonna seal it completely. It was a temporary place to hold remains till the year that they had elapsed. Nowadays, people can buy these as their family tomb. You pay about $7,000 and you're good for 100 years inside of one of those. The morning of Katrina, August 29, 2005, I woke up on the second floor of my second floor bedroom. I put my feet over the side of my bed. My feet were already in water. My downstairs had already flooded and I didn't even know what I was sleeping. My dog was losing his mind. He was going crazy running through the water. I got out of my back, my back window, my boat was underwater, I had a 20 foot flat boat. It took me about four hours to bail it out and get the bilge pump and get it to where it was working. Right, we're free to explore. <clears throat> I, I'm, I, I don't really know how to start saying what I need to say, but that was completely fascinating. The whole story of the tombs, uh, different types of tombs. I mean, this is a Masonic cemetery, so there's different religions and um, faiths in here. So some of the stuff you'll have seen on some of the clips that we captured, but there's a lot of things that he told us that you just had never thought, but you've used in your everyday life, like sayings. Like there was one saying where um, basically the, the sextants who manage the, the tombs basically clear the remains off every time somebody dies to fit the next family member in. And what they do is they use a 10 foot pole and they scoop the remains and push them into like a salad bowl at the back of the the, um, the tomb. And that's where they're saying, wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot barge pole. That's effectively what is saying the, the, um, the saying comes from. There was another one as well, because in the early days, in the 1800s, there was a lot of disease like yellow fever and cholera, and people were often put into gravestones before they actually had fully died, because the disease would slow down your um, your metabolism. People would think you're dead and they'd bury you alive. So when the sextants were opening up for the next family member, what they were doing is they were finding um, scratch marks and blood inside the tombs. So what they did is they fastened bells onto the toes of each dead person and then the sextant would sit for 24 hours outside the tomb after he'd sealed it to listen to see whether there was anybody, see if there's any bells ringing. And that's where the saying, Saved by the Bell, comes from. There was quite a, quite a few other yeah. sayings, weren't there? So we're kind of just walking around now. We're free to just kind of ponder around. It's really weird and eerie. But this one here 
he's basically said that is your standard family tomb and that can fit hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of family members in because they all decompose because they decompose and, and, and then get pushed to the back and that costs about 60 to 70 thousand dollars that's a plot yeah but that one that we first did the one down there that's four plots this one here is a new one after um, Hurricane Katrina and he was also saying as well that even though they don't bury people underground these are like built up soil trays and there are bodies in this grass area here and then there's this one at the end they basically have uh, if you're part of the Masonic, a Masonic Lodge and you can't afford your own tomb in effect what they do as long as you're in good character and good standing you get, you get to go in the lodge tomb which is effectively what one of these is. So there are thousands of bodies from thousands of families just inside there on shelves until you rot. And apparently it takes one year and one day before you're allowed to reopen tomb once something gets put in it. That literally looks like something from a movie, like doesn't it? Or, or so yeah, when you get buried in one of these tombs, by law, they're not allowed to open it for one year and one day. To give you time to for your body to go through all the seasons and like the hot of the, the heat of the summer apparently is about 450 Fahrenheit in these tombs and it allows your body to decompose fully um, now the guys actually said to us go around the cemetery and take photos and he says I bet you you get orbs appearing in your pictures so we're gonna wander around now and try that so this this tomb is the Weaver family 1997 it was opened 1991, 1960. So there was a 40-year gap before this wood opened, and then he got his 10-foot bash ball and scooped all the remains into it. And what the weird thing is, right, is I can feel heat, as if it's warmed in the sun, but yet when I touch, it's cold. Can you not feel like heat on your, like when you get close? On your face, you can feel it on your face. Yeah. It's like I'm, it's like there's a warm fire in front of me, and I can feel it on my face. But yeah, when I touch it, it's like here now. There's there's, there's heat where my hands are. Like on the steps, but it's ice cold. Off the bus, and we're just getting um, back to our hotel. Just look at this hotel here. We're on Royal Street again. Yeah, that looks so oldy worldy and kind of spooky. <laughs> it looks like you'd get murdered if you yeah. went in there. It's like something from a like a, a cheesy horror it movie looks, or something. It looks like you'd expect Sanderson sisters to come running out a yeah. door, wouldn't you? Or something like Practical Magic, the witch, witch is Maybe. jumping off the roof. I'm just going to get a fog car. I'd love to go look around that. Right, we're back in the hotel, thankfully. It is a very, slightly, a little bit intimidating out there on an evening. It's not like Bourbon Street and all that kind of area. So we've made our way back to the hotel and we've just ordered a pizza on Uber Eats. And then we're gonna go upstairs and um, I'm gonna try and not scratch my bites. We've all been bitten since we've been here. Vera has been bitten as well. Nick's been bitten all over his legs. I've got about three bites on my legs. Don't know whether, it, I don't think it was New Orleans. I think it was where we were before. Um, somewhere in Texas somewhere. Um, so we have had some update on Vera. Everything has gone fine. She's not had a hip replacement. She's, they've just sort of um, repaired it. And um, she's only just got out of um, like recovery. So we can't go see her. It's far too late. It's 11 o'clock at night. Um, so we'll go and see her tomorrow and we'll update you in the next vlog what is going on with her. Ooh! Oh! Some it's again... It's parmesan cheese? Oh yeah, I like it in America when they Should always put, put parmesan on? cheese. Yeah, sprinkle it everywhere. We got an extra portion of a uh, Mariana sauce as well. <laughs> Friggin' hell. That's gonna last for one I slice. I paid like $2 for that as well. We were just eating our pizza and we heard what sounded like loads of gunshots. It was gunshots. 100%. Like about six or seven. So we open the blinds and there's lots of police cars and lots of people around that front car. They're looking for shell casings on the floor. So there's one, two, three, four police cars and more coming by the sounds of it. Somebody in that car has been shot, I think. Makes me want to pack up now and drive to Florida. And we'll keep watching this and see what happens. Look at all those bikes there. Bikes where? With the glowing um, tyres. Uh, yeah. Another police, Another police car. car. Another one on the roundabout here. Yeah. 
that sounds like an ambulance. Fire engines just arrived. And more police I don't get, cars. I don't get why no ambulances are turning up. If somebody's been shot, surely there'd be an ambulance. Alright, whoever it was is going away on that bed. And the good news is they are sat up. So, um... Maybe just shot his legs. Hopefully okay. Right, so we're going to finish the vlog. Thanks for watching here guys, hit the like button, click the notification bell, drop us a comment below. I uh, hope you've enjoyed our time in New Orleans. It's been um, obviously a bit of a weird time for us at the moment with Vera being in the hospital. We'll update you on that tomorrow once we've gone and seen her. And then and tomorrow we're going to be exploring the garden district and yes. we're going to have a go on some of the streetcars. Yes. We're going to look at some of the classier stuff in New Orleans because what we've seen so far... It's been very bustly, bustly and... A little bit dirty streets and stuff like that. So tomorrow I'm really looking forward to seeing the Gardeners District, which is supposed to be beautiful. And I want to go and Gardeners. see Gardeners. Gardener Garden. District. And I want to go and see Anne Rice's house. So that's yeah. tomorrow. So I thought this the cemetery tour was completely fascinating, yes, was especially how they do all the burial because of the water table. So uh, we'll see you on the next vlog. Right, come on, let's go for his pizza. Bye.